Ever heard the phrase, power to the people? Now, with all due respect to friends and activists who have used those words many times, I object. In the next 15 minutes or so, I'll try to persuade you that the old paradigms of power, even power handed to the people from above, just don't meet our modern reality. And I'll try and articulate a, an alternative conception of power that does. Uh, what do I mean by power? First, I'm talking about power in the chemical sense of hydrocarbons and electrons transformed into energy to meet human needs. And second, I'm talking about power in the human sense of, of ideas transformed into actions that can change our politics to, to meet human needs. But before I go on, I need to pause and talk about the very real possibility that the power will go out. You see, Today on planet Earth, as we go about our business, living our individual lives, some 150 species will go extinct. It's a thousand times the natural background rate. Scientists are calling this the sixth great extinction. Today on planet Earth, some 60,000 people will become climate refugees as they're forced to leave their homes because of rising seas and raging storms and droughts and all the rest. Now, most of these people are way off in the global south, but increasingly, these climate refugees are Americans, too. Today on planet Earth, some 32,000 hectares of land, once fertile, will become desert. That's equivalent to the city of Detroit or Philadelphia. And in the process, that will imperil the livelihoods, even the lives of countless people. And today on planet Earth, some 15,000 people will die prematurely because of climate change. All of this in a single 24-hour period on this one and only planet we call home. These facts, I'm sorry to say, have one common driver, and that's us. See, since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, we in the US and England and the developed world, and increasingly today, folks in China and India and rapidly industrializing economies, we've been spewing fossil fuels and causing the warming of our planet at a rate we have never seen since human life began. We are literally overpowering the natural systems on which human life and countless other species depend. It is time that we changed this power dynamic. Now, I first became interested in power in the mechanical sense back in high school some 20 years ago. Uh, friends and I on the Monadnock Solar Race Car Team, we, we built a nifty car, a solar-powered car called the Soul Survivor. This thing had 375 precious watts of solar photovoltaics. We had a bulky 9.5 kilowatt battery on board, and it could power a single individual some 75 miles on, on a single charge. We'd take it to events. We'd race against the big guys like MIT, and, and we had a lot of fun. We didn't set any ground speed records, but, but it was fun. Of course, then I'd go home at night after our weekly practice sessions, and I'd flick on the lights, I'd turn up the furnace, and, and I'd bask in a very different kind of power, pretty much heedless of the consequences. Not too much later, I, I went off to college after serving a year with AmeriCorps, and I enrolled my freshman year in my first geophysics course on, on global climate change. And I started in the process learning a thing or two about this dominant power system, power from above, that, that I'd just taken for granted. I got to teach English for summer in Shenzhen, China, outside Shenzhen, and we'd go into the city and you could barely see the sun. I got to visit other smog-filled cities in India, in the Middle East, in North Africa, Latin America. And everywhere I went, it, it dawned on me more and more that we were, we were doing irreparable harm to, to this, our, our planetary home. The truth began to set in more and more. Now, it was about that same time, college student, that I got to learn about a different kind of power, uh, that, that first kind of power that I mentioned at the beginning. You see, I was reading my newspapers and, and learned that there in Connecticut, where I was a student, the governor was, was in fact being convicted and jailed for corruption. Uh, he had been taking money from state contractors and lobbyists and giving them big handouts in return. And I began to see that this, this corruption was symptomatic of a, of a deeper systemic corruption. 
And with friends at Yale and other campuses, I, I started organizing across the state, joining more seasoned activists to try and respond to this corruption of, of power. A little later in my 20s, I headed to Washington, D.C. I had to serve as president of Americans for Campaign Reform, a nonprofit now known as Issue One. And I would trek up to Capitol Hill with my team, and I'd beg for appointments with senators and representatives, more often their junior staff. And I would implore them with as much eloquence as I could muster to, to change this power dynamic, to give power back to the people instead of just being beholden to the, the big money interests that funded their campaigns. Now, we didn't have the money to buy their time or to bring on high-powered lobbyists to, to advocate on our behalf. And although we, we won a few good battles, it often feels like we've, we've lost that war for our democracy. It was in the course of that work that I, I came to see that there was an essential interplay between clean energy and clean elections. And there was a dilemma inherent in this conception of power to the people from, from above. Take the 2016 election, for instance. Uh, in that election, big oil and gas and coal collectively invested some $300 million in our federal politics through campaign donations, PACs, lobbying. Now, that may sound like a lot of money, but consider that in the same year, those fossil fuel companies received more than $20 billion in direct, permanent federal tax breaks and subsidies. That's many times more than what the entire renewables industry received. And for the accountants out there, that's about a 7,000% ROI. You see, my experience engaging directly with the centers of political power, it convinced me that folks who have the power, they just don't care to give it up. If power to the people was our request, the answer was no. The analogy to energy is simple enough. Under our current top-down power system today, some big monopolistic utility spends millions of dollars trying to persuade the public officials to give it the permission to build some massive centralized power plant. That money may be spent ethically or otherwise, but that money gets spent and the utility gets the permission to build their power plant and, and distribute that power through a centralized distribution network to thousands, millions of customers. And you and I, the ratepayers, we pay our monthly bills and collectively every year we're paying billions of dollars back to these big utilities providing centralized power from above. Now, the, the power fueling these power plants, it, it doesn't fall from the sky. Uh, for the most part, in fact, about 80% of, of world power is the oily, gassy remains of prehistoric critters that are dug up at great expense from, from deep underground. And to make matters even worse, much of that power is lost just in the process of burning it as, as heat loss. That's, that's our power from above not to mention the two and a half million pounds of carbon pollution that gets spewed out into our atmosphere every second, warming our planet still further. Now, we can be thankful in many ways for that centralized power system and for fossil fuels. It's given us our modern world in, in very many ways. And yet today, we have to acknowledge it is threatening our common future as a species and, and countless other species every day. Now instead, I want to talk about power, not power to the people, but power from the people. This starts in a very different way also from above, because in case you didn't notice it, there is a big fiery power plant in the sky, the biggest one of them all. Uh, in fact, in a single hour, the sun delivers to the surface of the earth enough power to meet all human needs for an entire year, an entire year, one hour of sunlight. And thanks to technological breakthroughs in solar photovoltaics, which have brought the power of the cost of solar down about 70% in the last decade, we now have the potential to meet a major share of human needs just from the sun, on our roofs, in our lawns. We can say no to the power brokers, the centralized mechanisms, and, and literally power our lives and, and lifestyles today. So, let me turn to three principles of this, this new power dynamic, this power from the people. It is, first of all, 
bottom up. Second of all, interdependent. And third of all, regenerative. So let's start with bottom up power. Like a democracy, which only functions when people exercise their, their civic responsibility and vote, getting involved at the grassroots level, we now have the ability to radically transform our power system from the bottom up. Think of it as energy democracy. I'll start with my own home, 17 solar panels on my roof and 15 more coming in a couple of weeks. Uh, on a nice sunny day like today, uh, I figure we'll generate three, even four times what we use in our home. We are one of some 10,000 homes in the state of New Hampshire, and if you go a little south to Massachusetts, some 300,000 people have literally declared that they will generate their own power from the bottom up without relying on that central power system of fossil fuels. Homes by the millions across this country, you know, 20 panels at a time, are disrupting this central power system and, and generating power from the bottom up. And the power we get from, from my roof is not enough just, just to turn on the lights and power the computer. It'll even drive my electric car, which I can plug in at night. Bottom-up power is evident far beyond our shores as well. In South Africa, where my wife comes from, and across the African continent, we see entire regions skipping the, the top-down power system and opting instead to install solar panels, 5, 10, 20 at a time, single panels on, on grass huts or community centers, and, and say no thanks to that central distribution mechanism, literally transforming the power dynamic. Secondly, this new power from the people system is interdependent. Just like democracy starts from the recognition that we are all dependent upon one another, or no man is an island, uh, power from the people is also inherently interdependent. Take the grid, for example. Thanks to an accidental innovation in the 1970s called net metering, those extra kilowatt hours that I produce today on my roof, three or four times what we actually use in the home, get sent right out over the wires, the existing wires, to my neighbors. And I'm helping my neighbor, Linda, do her laundry, or Karen, uh, watch TV. As more and more homes participate in this distributed energy system, creating power of their own, sharing it with the neighborhood, on those peak power summer days when, when demand is at its highest, we can literally reduce the need to build those extra power plants saving all of us a huge amount of money in the process. For those, you know, nighttime when, when the sun isn't shining, we can opt in to responsible power sources uh, from hydro, from wind, which is where we get our, any excess power that we need, uh, which is in turn res generated responsibly in, in other communities. Another example of bottom-up power interdependence, uh, take the Community solar farm movement, it's much like CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture, where if you don't have a solar friendly roof or, or patch of land, you get together with friends, neighbors, you find a, a remote piece of land and you invest together in a community solar farm. Each of you owning shares and getting power in return to offset your electric bills. Or, or going even one step further, energy inter interdependence manifests in, in community power initiatives where entire cities from liberal Burlington, Vermont to conservative Georgetown, Texas, they say no thanks to the centralized for-profit utilities and, and create their own municipal utilities instead from wind, from water, from, from the sun. And finally, this power from the people is, is truly regenerative. You know, just like democratic action begets more democratic action as we're seeing today in the inspired youth movements of Never Again and, and Black Lives Matter, families that take the first step of putting solar on their roof, they, they rarely stop there. They go to their community institutions, their schools, their churches, their, their community centers, and they, they convince those institutions to do the same, to install solar on their roof or, or on their ground, to, to weatherize. And, and, and once they've dealt with the energy issue, they, they don't stop there. They challenge those institutions, the, the universities, to divest from fossil fuels and, and opt out of this, this broken energy system. This kind of regenerative movement is not limited to energy. We see it in agriculture and in many other spheres as families, children often leading the way, uh, lead to, to further positive action. And we even see it in the private sector. You know, the, 
business doesn't get a very good rap these days, but we see solar companies around this country, benefit corporations like Revision Energy, where, where I work, saying no thanks to the old top-down profit before anything else uh, mode of capitalism. And, and these companies are instead registering as, as certified B Corps, benefit corporations. They're, they're saying, yes, profit counts, but people come before profit. The planet comes before profit. Employee ownership as, as the next step, where everybody in the business is an equal stakeholder in the process. Talk about regeneration. And they're investing in the common good, whether it's you know, giving their employees paid volunteer hours in the community or building solar power stations to send over to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. You get my drift. Now, I began this talk with some, some rather gloomy statistics. But as we've seen, the story does not end there. You see, at the same time today as thousands of people, innocent people, will die prematurely from climate change, hundreds of thousands of individual solar panels will be installed all around the world in what I believe will prove to be the most radical transformation of power of energy our, our Earth has ever seen. It is up to us, all of us, to accelerate this clean energy transformation to recognize and, and reclaim some of the power that is already in our hands. It's time that we all committed a million acts of energy interdependence. Friends, the power is in your hands and on your roof. Will you join me in harnessing it? Thanks. <laughs>